Hey there, Tim Werner here. I'd like to spend a few minutes describing the new Microsoft Azure certifications for you. I think that this is going to be time well spent if you have any professional interaction with the Microsoft Azure product family, and in particular, if you're interested in certification. Let's take a look at our agenda. It's quite simple, actually. I'm going to begin by reviewing what happened to the MCSE in cloud platform and how has that evolved now into this new badge system for Microsoft Azure. And then I'll complete with some bullet points on what we can cover in subsequent videos. Please, as always, you know the typical YouTube yada yada. Leave your feedback in the comments. I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. And any ideas that you have for future installments, please let me know. Okay, so given that, let's get to work. The old MCSE. Now, this certification, the actual MCSE initials, have been around as long as I've been in the industry. I entered IT full time in 1997. And at that time, my first MCSE, it was called Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer, was in Windows NT. Now, those letters carry a lot of weight even to now, but we finally see that MCSE is... Microsoft tried to get rid of it back in 2008 or so, 2007, with the MCITP, if you remember that. It's been dying a long death for a long time. And what we have here is that up until this year, late 2018, we've had the Microsoft Certified Solutions Expert, MCSE, in cloud platform and infrastructure. This is an all-in-one certification. In other words, it's not broken by job role. There's no differentiation, for instance, if you're an operations professional or a developer or an architect or a data analyst, whatever. It's just you have to know quite a bit about all of those aforementioned roles in order to earn the title. Now, why do I mention this? Well, because it's largely a historical artifact. As I record this video in mid-December 2018, these exams in the MCSE and Cloud Platform will be retired at the end of this calendar year. If you haven't started this certification path, forget about it. <laughs> if you actually are in the middle of it or almost finished and you're watching this video before December 31st, then I'll have a bit more to say momentarily. Now, in your Microsoft official transcript, you might be thinking to yourself, Tim, what happens when a certification retires? Does it drop off my transcript? The answer to that question is no. What you see here is an extract from my own Microsoft Certified Professional Transcript, and you have a section for active certifications, and then you have certification history. For instance, you see that I earned the MCITP in Windows Server in 2008, I was a charter awardee, which means that you were one of the first people to get that certification. And although that credential has long since gone the way of the dodo, it will always be on my transcript. So if you do have MCSE in Cloud Platform, fly your flag proudly because it's a great accomplishment across the board and it will always be available on your transcript. Now, what about these new Azure badges? If you're an old salt like me, you're accustomed to earning a certification and getting an actual eight and a half by 11 certificate that you frame and put on the wall. But nowadays, we live in a social media world. So we have a company called Credly that Microsoft has partnered with to create digital credentials. You can, in fact, order a print certificate from Microsoft directly if you want to. But nowadays, with social media being so popular, the idea of the badge is that it's a validated way to prove that you have the certification. And these badges are eminently shareable or embeddable in your social media, for instance, in LinkedIn or Twitter or on your website. And you can even embed them into your online curriculum vita or resume. And this solves the problem of people who claim to be certified but actually are not. These are hyperlinks that go to the Credly site and verify that you have the cert. Now, what is a claim? You'll see both of those terms. In fact, let me come to the next slide. This is what my badge detail webpage looks like when I passed the AZ100 exam. You notice that it says a claim in the upper left and not Credly. Credly purchased a claim. We can consider those terms to be interchangeable. Both of them are companies that do digital badges. A claim was part of Pearson, I believe, and Credly scooped them up. So eventually, I imagine the Acclaim brand will go away and Credly will be the one going forward. And like I said, these badges have validation attached to them. In this case, the new Azure certifications have a two-year expiration on them. 
They also validate your skills you see here. So this is something you can share with your consulting clients, with your current employer, with prospective employers, prospective customers to verify that you do have those skills. I think that Microsoft made a really good decision by going this badge route. I really do. Now, nowadays, these Azure certifications are based on job roles, whereas the MCSE and cloud platform was kind of all or nothing. I mean, in order to earn it, you had to know quite a bit about Azure administration. You had to know quite a bit about Azure development, and you even had to know architecture. And that's not a good fit for many people who specialize in maybe only one of those roles. More recently, we have this trend towards DevOps. There's a job role that Microsoft defined called Azure DevOps Engineer. So what we see now is that you can now specialize more granularly in Azure based on your desired job role. All right, that's what we've got going on nowadays. Now, this is in flux. The DevOps Engineer path, I think those exams are still in beta. It's something you'll always want to keep an eye on. Look at the exam pages at the Microsoft Learning website. I personally don't like to take the tests in beta, primarily because I'm interested in immediate gratification. <laughs> if you take a Microsoft exam while it's in beta, you do not get your results immediately like you do when the exam is in generally available status. Let's take a look at the three certification tiers that the new Azure certs are all about. We have the ground level or fundamentals level called Microsoft Certified Azure Fundamentals person. That's kind of an awkward title for a cert. This is optional. And I only recommend it for individuals who are being sponsored by their businesses where you don't have to pay the money to register. These exams are not cheap. And the reason I say that is because if you're brand new, and especially if you're not paying for the exam, it's a good way and a good excuse to learn the ground level info on Azure, but it doesn't count for an associate or expert level title. That's why I say that it really is optional. I suggest if you have any experience with Azure, you start at the associate level. In fact, as you'll see in a moment, you have to start at the associate level if you want to go to the expert in DevOps. But as you see here, we have badges for administrator, developer, and then there's going to be more to come, data, DevOps, and so on going forward. And then if you want to go to the expert level, we've got, it's interesting how the administrator and the developer both collapse onto the same expert level title. So if you're looking at it through the prism of the old way of doing things, you remember the Microsoft Certified Solutions Associate or MCSA is oftentimes a stepping stone to the MCSE. Similarly, the associate credentials are fine in their own right, but you can combine the administrator and the developer tests by taking a third one on DevOps to earn a DevOps engineer expert title. You'll notice off to the side that the solution architect does not have a hard dependency on administrator or developer, so you could go directly into that path. And that, again, is in beta as far as I know, so I'm not going to talk about it in this particular video. What I do want to go over are the administrator and developer paths because those exams are in general availability. In order to earn your Azure Administrator Associate, you have to pass two exams. There's AZ100 called Azure Infrastructure and Deployment and AZ101 called Azure Integration and Security. You can take either one first. It doesn't matter. It's just as your comfortability. In my professional opinion, I would recommend that you do 100 first because 101 does tend to reference and take for granted many of the subjects that are in the 100 source material. So take that suggestion however you want to. For the developer certification path, it's the same thing, only this time we've got AZ200, which is core solutions, and 201, advanced solutions. Now, I think Microsoft, again, has thought this out really well. The roles have integers that are in, well, I'm having a hard time articulating this. It's not that difficult, Tim. It's not that difficult. <laughs> Let me go back. The administrator is 100 series. So any exams that are within the administrator role will be AZ 100 something. In the developer role certification path, that's 200 something. So it's easier for me to keep straight and hopefully it is for you as well. And the solution architect is 300. So you would reasonably expect that as Microsoft adds additional roles and certification paths, we'll have 400, 500 and so forth. So architect, the solution architect role, we've got AZ300 and AZ301 that cover those particular skill sets. 
Now, what if you've already passed one or more of the previous exams, the ones that qualified for the MCSE and cloud platform? Well, the good news there is that you can spend less money and in a sense, shortcut your way to the associate level. Now, you do have to have passed either the 533 exam, that's the infrastructure exam, the old one, 532, which was the old developer exam, and or 535, which was the old architect exam. You have to pass those in order to receive credit for taking a transition exam. I mean, certainly Microsoft will take your money. They'll let you register for AZ 102, 202, or 302 if you want, but they will not give you the badge unless you have passed the associated previous exam. Those, again, are going to be retired as of the end of calendar year 2018. If you do qualify, the transition exams are a good deal because it's only one registration price instead of two exams. And what these transition exams are are composites where, for instance, if we look at AZ-102, the transition for Azure Administrator, that exam is a blend of AZ-100 and 101 content. Same with developer for AZ 200 and 201 and for architect AZ 300 and 301. I mean, Microsoft has offered these transition exams for a long time. I remember taking them for Windows Server years ago, but that can present, like I said, a nice shortcut for some of you. Now, I think that's really it. I wanted to keep this video as reasonable in length as possible. So let's wrap up by my saying thank you, of course. And also for future topic ideas, I have a few. I'd like to do a video going into the new Azure exams, their structure. Now, I'm not going to violate my non-disclosure agreement or NDA with Microsoft, but I can share what Microsoft itself shares publicly knowledgeable or public knowledge and give you tips and tricks and strategies for conquering the exam. That actually could be another whole video on conquering, for instance, lab simulations, or actually they're not lab simulations. They're honest to goodness virtual labs nowadays that you'll find in your tests. There's build list and reorder and other interactive items. There are case studies to deal with. So that's certainly a good subject. Cert preparation planning. I have lots of good tips, tricks, and strategies on how you can develop your roadmap for gaining Azure certification. And then I have tips and tricks and places to go, et cetera, for saving money on your exam registrations. So like I said, if you have additional questions, please let me know in the comments. Follow me on Twitter, Tech Trainer Tim. My DMs, my direct messages are always open, so you can contact me there as well. Thanks very much. Best of luck in your cert studies. See you around.